Welcome to Share Talk, the only podcast where investors come first. Hello and welcome to the sixth podcast from Market Musings with Fairburn and Russell. Last week on the podcast, we had David Price as our first guest, and we spoke to him briefly about his background and the current activities that Rockfire are working on. And today, we're very lucky because we have another guest, a special guest. And I must admit, I'm a little bit nervous because he used to host a regular podcast show, and we're still very young in the game. And this man is a a man with a wealth of knowledge in the mining sector, but also in the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency space. So I'm hoping we have a lot to talk about today. So let me introduce Malcolm Pally, former mining maven, and currently with the executive chairman of Coincilium. Hello, Malcolm. Uh, hi, Mark. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. And Kenny, I believe you 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 know Malcolm for quite a quite a long time. Yes. How are you doing, Malcolm? Yeah, I think uh, myself and Malcolm go back probably ten, twelve years. Indeed. I was actually yeah uh, yeah I actually remember the first ever phone conversation I had with Malcolm it was in deepest darkest Donegal. I had no phone signal, and the internet was an old satellite outside the house. And I remember standing under this satellite, speaking to Malcolm for an hour and a half. Can, okay. can you remember, Malcolm, what, what stock we're talking about? Um, I'm sure it was a stock. I mean, I don't usually talk for an hour and a half about <laughs> anything unless it's a stock. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that's how sad I am. Um, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a guess because at that time um, it was probably Ariana. Yeah, resources. correct. Yeah. Ariana well, Resources, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's that's just goes to show doesn't it i mean patience is is really a virtue and um it's taken 12 well no I, that's not fair to say it's taken 12 years to come good but uh, i notice now it's 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 reached that kind of uh recognition which uh, we were really hoping for <laughs> was just around the corner in 2008 but uh, we had a few cycles mm. to go through in between so it's not entirely there Paul. it's always the case though isn't it i found that i mean i came into the stock market again a bit later um than kenny and yourself but you always feel it's right around the corner and you've just got to get in now but very often you you're wrong <laughs> it well, takes a lot longer than you think indeed and no more so in the mining and exploration space because um you know you've got to then take into consideration irrespective of the time scales for for development Mm. uh um there's also the cycles you know the um and in 2008 we were before the blow off uh of gold in 2011 uh just after the global financial crisis so no one really knew had a clue what was around the corner Mm. um but uh yeah you've really patience if you haven't got the patience uh yeah. i think it was warren buffett who said if you could if you're not prepared to be in the stock market for five years you should be in there for five minutes mm. yeah, yeah it's very I, sp- true. I suppose i suppose the big question is uh malcolm do you still hold ariana after of all course. these years absolutely so it's only just getting started good stuff <laughs> good stuff yeah i've uh, been a i've been a buyer all the way um, yeah. okay. and you know it's one of those things that kind of I think, you know, it's, it, you don't, I, I mean, this is funny because you, you're talking to me as uh, sort of chairman of um, Coincilium. And I did explain that, you know, we, we're quite careful how we position ourselves in, um, in terms of actually talking to the public because, you know, we re- recognize that blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies are, are, are a little understood. So, mm-hmm. you know, we, we just want to sort of, uh, I hope this is going to be a, an opportunity to, to talk more about Yes. New technology and, and, and cryptocurrencies rather than specifically pitch Coincilium. Um, but nonetheless, you know, and object to anyone looking at our shares and, and finding out a bit more about us. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to, um, you know, talking about uh, the shares, I've, I've followed Ariana. I've been a great admirer of the company and the management for, um, since those that time. And I think that the first time I met um, Karen, the um, CEO, man, managing director, what sort of um, I picked up on is – his um, dedication and tenacity. And, uh, you know, you, you've seen a lot of stories come and go, but they've just carried on. They've just carried yep. on and carried on and carried on. And eventually, you know, things come together and you've just got to have that doggy determination. There are yeah. not many um, projects that go from um, literally a discovery to production. Mm. I think the, 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 the odds of that are one in a thousand. So, yeah. you know, you need a bit of luck along the way and you mm. need to be able to ride your luck. Um, I think that, you know, when people started moaning and complaining when the price 
was 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 uh, was going down. Um, just sort of, you know, grit your teeth and and buy. There's another expression I picked up was you should be buying the market when it feels like you're swallowing broken glass. That's when you should be buying. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Not heard that one before. No, yeah. that's a new one for me. Yeah, but yeah. it makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. 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 But you've got to be. You've got to have. You know. You've got to have faith. I mean, that's. Yeah. Uh, and you. And that's. You know. Not just kind of hope for the best. You really got to think. Well, I know the odds. I know the. I know the risk. But ultimately, um, if this. Uh, you know, this has got what it takes to come good. Um, yeah. It doesn't always work out, but you know that's that's key. Once you actually you get that resolve and you buy against the trends, that that's when you'll make the most out of mm. it. So I'm still yeah I'm sticking there. Three p. I think I told Karen that uh, I would buy if the price ever got to two p. I'd buy a gold suit. Um, <laughs> so it's a three p. Now, so I really got to go out and buy it. I think he <laughs> promised to buy me a silver tie. Um, but um, I've got to go out and do it. I, I haven't seen him for a little while, so I think next time I bump into him, I'll have to turn up in one. Yeah, yeah. Good. sounds good. good. <laughs> okay, Malcolm, before we, we, we jump on to uh, Bitcoin and, and crypto stuff, yeah, can you give us a couple of minutes and what you've done in your life? Obviously, we, you, we know you're involved in mining and maven and uh, yeah. the crypto yeah. side of things, and obviously an investor as well, but mm-hmm. can you dig deep into the into yeah. the brain and give us a, just just a bit sure. about your investing journey or what you've done in business activities in your life etc just yeah I, I mean I, I i think i've never had a held down a kind of a, a, a steady job um i've been to the school of hard knocks I, i've done i've been had various um kind of uh, careers um which have sort of one ended the other one started i started off in travel and tourism uh i was a tour guide i worked in eastern europe um when I was in my 20s, I spent three years in Romania working as a tour guide. A bit weird how I got there. I thought I was going to make the company was going to send me to Spain um, and because I spoke <laughs> Spanish. And uh, a week before, they said, we don't need you in Spain, but we need you in Romania. So um, I didn't know where that was, but I ended up going there, spent three years, learnt the language. And that set off the next career, which was uh, when I got back, I started a tour operator specialising in Romania. Um, okay. okay. <laughs> In the 80s. Uh, and then I, um, you know, I, I won't say I got bored, but uh, things moved on and I got into mobile t- telecoms uh, and I, I sold my, uh, my business. And um, then I got it, started selling mobile phones in, the, in 1985. Uh, which was when I'm quite old, by the way. Um, I mean, that's <laughs> really from, most of your listeners probably don't go back that far, but these mobile phones are about two thousand pounds each. And and I was told that the commission was very good, and it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was the time when Thatcher was sort of getting to grips with the country, and uh, mm-hmm. yuppies were born. Harry Enfield uh, sort of gave, gave birth to that idea, and everyone I worked with fell into that category. We all sort of um, did very well selling mobile flo- mobile phones at two thousand pounds each, making good money. Uh, then I kind of noticed a gap in the market in that telco sector where. Um, a mobile phone was a piece of business equipment that you could actually take out of the office and computers weren't really that small then. So um, it was very hard to get insured because insurance companies didn't want to insure portable business equipment because they didn't really understand how to uh, evaluate the risk on it. So I set up a, a consultancy. Uh, I left my mobile phone sales job, set up a consultancy, um, w- uh, approached an underwriter at Lloyd's and um, and set up effectively the first mobile phone insurance right. company. Um, and that I ran for 10 years, took me through to 2000. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, uh, I got really, did all the business I could do. And uh, the underwriters and the insurance administrators had enough of me sitting there just um, <laughs> getting, living off my commissions and uh, not really having any other uh, all, all the uh, telcos already had their schemes in place. Mm. So um, they made me an offer and uh, I took it and uh, I, I wasn't particularly happy, but so be it. And uh, I went to Nottingham from London and opened a hotel. Um, okay. So I had lots <laughs> of different things. Yeah. Uh, ran, that, ran that for two years. Um, I felt like I, it was a very small hotel. It was only about 20 rooms. Um, and it just came up. I was going to buy it as a property and convert it. But um uh, I decided I just wanted a change. And uh, so I ran it for two years with a partner and um, uh, started realizing I'm 
starting to become basil faulty. I wanted to hit all the guests you, and uh, you <laughs> took, the, took the words out of my mouth. I was just thinking yeah. John John Cleese and Forty Tales. So yeah, it was it was it became quite monotonous for me. And I thought, well, before I do any real damage, I better get out of it. So I, I sold my share in the hotel. My partner wanted to buy me out, um, uh, and uh, he was a lot more. Um, kind of as a business partner he had a totally different kind of uh, approach he, mm. he just thought it was great i'll get up every day and do this uh <laughs> not, no headache and i wanted a bit of a headache again i was getting fed yeah. up with that so i moved back down to london and um started um kind of investing a little bit uh, i got involved in tech stocks and that was when i was really um sort of getting more involved in actually managing my own um money as an investor um, and that sort of led to Mining Maven probably okay. 2009. So that sort of brought you a little bit up to speed and uh, yeah. uh, where we are. But I think the business experience um, for any investor, I think, is is an, is an asset because you can actually look at the company you're invested in as more than just a piece of, you know, a, a, a stock price. You, you actually kind of get a good um, grounding in, um, in, in the numbers and – you know, you ask the right questions uh, because you know what it's like running a private company. And I think a lot of people who run public companies, um, if they haven't had that experience in actually managing money themselves, and they always think they can go to the market to to tap the market if they need some cash, it's not a good discipline. I'm not saying that all directors are like that, but you know, if you haven't had that grounding in or that discipline of actually you know living within your means and, and running the budget mm. as it needs to be you know it can be a little bit of a hairy ride for investors so anyway well wow. um, I, I, I yeah that's i didn't expect that at all malcolm <laughs> that's a very varied <laughs> career it's amazing yeah, yeah i yeah i wasn't i didn't I, I, i've known you for a wee while malcolm but i didn't know any of that at all so uh, right. yeah well, it's I'm new, ancient, news to me I'm yeah ancient. i mean if course, i'm not you know, you go a little bit further and then it sort of comes to Coincilium. Well, what happened there, how I got involved in Coincilium and, mm. and, and cryptocurrencies was actually after the, um, uh, the gold uh, peaked at uh, 1900 to uh, just under $2,000, I think, and um, came back down. And then, of course, all the mining stocks um, really fell into um, a slump. And mm. I was looking really, I was looking around because I didn't really think that, um, that sector, which I'd spent a lot of time kind of um, getting to grips with, um, was going to come out of that slump anytime soon. Okay. And it was a long, long, long haul. Um, and uh, so I, Bitcoin came up on my radar and I, I started exploring it. And then I went to a few events mm -hmm. uh, because there was a whole community in London. And I realized that, that you know, there was something there. It's, um, mm. it's a new kind of money um it was uh being used in very shady circles as well mm -hmm. but i used to that with any new technology you know because um even with mobile phones when i first started selling mobile phones um a lot of criminals were using them yeah. you know yeah. and um and ladies of the night as well yeah. you know <laughs> they were our best customers so <laughs> <laughs> you know you, you and likewise with the internet when that first started it was mm. um i think it was driven by a lot of um porn so yeah. yeah when did you get in when did when was that malcolm what what year was that you went to cointillium uh well the, the the sort of the germ of the idea and the roots of it was in 2014 okay 2013 and 14 i was looking seriously into it okay and then i i kind of um when I realized there was something there, yeah. I, I knew that, you know, with any business, any new technology, um, to, to exploit it, to actually make the most of it, you need to actually see what um, the picks and shovels are of the industry. You know, yeah. like uh, in the gold rush, the people who made the most money were the people who were um, selling the, the miners the picks and shovels. Yeah. So um, this is really how I looked at this. And the first thing I thought was, is there an incubator? Is anyone running an yeah. incubator? Because you need to get involved in this sector. You need wallets. You need exchanges. Mm -hmm. You need um, services, advisory education. There's a whole raft of things that go with it. And that was where I was looking. You know, I, you know, I didn't know whether I – if I had known then that I could have bought Bitcoin and just yeah. sat on it, 
Now, yeah. to ask you a question, I would have probably done that. But then again, um, because the returns have been absolutely um, amazing, uh, yeah. Ast- yeah. Aston- astonishing. Well, you but, got um, in really early, didn't you? I mean, that, that's not, uh, really not as early the as I could. Well, not, not as, early. as early as I could as I could have done. I just want to ask you, you and your viewers, your listeners, rather, yeah. a question because um, I did ask Kenny, as as you know, um, you know, why he hasn't got any Bitcoin. Maybe he's got some now. I don't know. But if you were to put a dollar or a pound, let's say, into Bitcoin in 2010, what would it have been worth today? One pound. Um, One pound. Okay, I'm going to make a guess. Let's guess. Um, I'm going to go crazy guess. Um, a million. <laughs> well, no, that's more. One pound to a million. Um, I have no, no one said that yet. Most people have been quite realistic. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say 500 times your money, Malcolm. Yeah. Okay. Well, one pound would be ninety thousand. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's uh, it's not quite a million, but ten pounds would have been a million. Oh yeah, no, sure. eleven, 11 pounds. Eleven would have been yeah. a million. So you're not too far. So you know, a hundred pounds uh, would have been ten million. Um, isn't that crazy? Yeah. And and so I I didn't get involved until 2014, 15. I bought my first Bitcoin in 2015. Um, and it's still in the hundreds. Um, and uh, I didn't sort of back up the truck because um, I didn't understand it well enough to actually do that. And likewise, you know, uh, it's just one of those regrets you have in life. <laughs> but ultimately, you know, I, I was always kind of thinking about the business and yeah. the business opportunity. So when we sort of got Coincilium started, it was really um, to, I, I found Eddie Travia and two other co-founders, uh, we brought it to London and listed it. But it was the idea was, um, Eddie Travia is our CEO, um, the idea was to create a vehicle where retail investors could get exposure to blockchain technology and uh, effectively um, anything to do with cryptocurrencies where we're quite selectively involved. But our, the, our focus is on the technology as in blockchain, because oh. Bitcoin, the actual inventor of Bitcoin is pseudonymous Satoshi Nakamoto. Yeah. And everyone knows him as the inventor of Bitcoin, but he created the first blockchain and called it Bitcoin. So that's what Bitcoin is. Bitcoin is a blockchain. Uh, it just happens to be divided up into up to 21 million pieces. Yeah. On that note, Malcolm, obviously uh, you asked me that question, you know, why I yeah. don't have any Bitcoin. Uh, to, to answer it, it's probably... It actually it actually scares me. It's probably just a lack of education and and the so yeah. unknown the unknown unknowns. I know it sounds ridiculous, but where, where do you start, Malcolm? You know, for somebody like yeah. me, where, where do well, you start? I think, yeah, I think that's not, that's not um, unusual, and it's not something to be in any way ashamed of. It's it's just a question of you. We tend to, as investors, go where we feel most comfortable, mm-hmm. but that's not always where the best opportunities are. And you could say that about the mining space because you've already got you dipped your toe in the more than dipped your toe in the water. You're up, and, you know, you involved. You've gone past that initial scary in it, learning, uh, you know, uh, point, and then you get you go down the rabbit hole and you learn more. And it's exactly the same with cryptocurrencies and blockchain. Mm. I think you have to. Um, I, I'm happy to provide you with some touch points for education. And I gave you, um, I think. A, uh, a few stats um, before this interview where um, we are today. And I think it would be a good idea to run over this. So there's over 42 million Bitcoin wallets um, have been set up globally by December last year. And 5% of Americans are old Bitcoin. Um, 7.1 million active users uh, and over and Coinbase, which is one of the largest crypto exchanges, um, has over 30 million, 13 million users. So, you know, it's not it's at the point where I think perhaps the Internet was um, in 1994, 1995, mm-hmm. um, where perhaps people like you, Kenny, and, uh, and you, Mark, where you think, OK, well, this isn't going away, but it's nowhere near um, mainstream yet. Maybe yeah. it's time that I started to um, to get to understand it a little well, it, bit more. It tried to make a, a bid for mainstream, didn't it? What 
a year ago, two years ago, when you know it was everywhere in the, in the papers and your man on the street was talking about it, you know. Um, but I guess that was was that more just was that just hype at the time, or was there some substance behind that? Do you think? And and how many of these sort of Bitcoin holders now are effectively people who who sort of started and didn't really know what they were doing? And I wonder if it will, you know, it will sort of continue to grow. I mean, what's your feeling on that? I, I think there's um, I, the perception is probably driven of what you're saying is not not wrong. There was a lot more awareness in mainstream um, three years ago yeah. because the the price the price of Bitcoin was 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 going, going crazy, and, it, yeah. and and that is what created the attention. I, I at that time in 2017, um, I was I got a call from BBC um, Newsnight, mm. and um, they wanted me to to go. I I went on the show, and I was up against a um, a journalist from the Financial Times. Yes, I think now, I saw I, it actually. I, yeah. So at the time, you know, at that time, China had banned um, uh, cryptocurrencies and Jamie Dimon had come out from uh, and said that uh, uh, it was a bubble. And so I was there as the kind of sacrificial mm. lamb, really. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it wasn't sort of a, a, an easy... I, did, I knew what... I went in with my eyes open. But the, the point was that... Um, I think the point I tried to make is that uh, there's a lot of hype around it, but they don't... The people who actually... Uh, are getting involved in the hype don't really understand what's driving this and where yeah. it's coming from uh, and that was really key to it because it, you know why was it that when bitcoin was at uh two three dollars it went up to 35 dollars and then back down to two dollars yeah but because there were so few people involved um it didn't really make any headlines but because mm -hmm. of the amount of hype around it uh, and then the regulation comes comes along because quite clearly, if anything acts like money, it's going to be treated like money and it's going to mm. be um, require sort of oversight. So it wasn't so much it was making a bid for, um, I think it got dragged into it, but you, yeah. you have two different kinds. You have those who actually are sort of following the price and then there's a, a whole global community of people who actually use it as money. Okay. And um, those people haven't really gone away. Um, they're there, they're growing, and the uses are, are growing, and and that's really the point. But I'll certainly give you some um, some pointers. Yeah. Um, sure. And I think that you're probably not too late in any way, shape, or form. I wouldn't just say go out and buy some and uh, and and sit yeah. on it and just keep watching the price. I think the important thing is that I think it's just gone back over ten thousand dollars. But yeah. you can buy you can buy twenty pounds worth. You can buy fifty pounds worth. Yeah, it's not you know it's not. Or you can buy five hundred or a thousand. Um, I think it's got a lot further to go. You reckon? Uh, so, it's, simply, so it's come off the it's come off the high, is it? And you, you reckon maybe it, yeah. it's, it's it's time well, it's, well, it's, it's possibly a good buy I now. Think, yeah, I, look, I I don't look at it short term. So, yeah. but I that said, you there are some banking app in the Revolut. Um, you mm. can buy Bitcoin on that. You don't have. You can sort of uh, you, uh, you 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 buy. I think they pool it, so you don't actually own the Bitcoin directly, but okay. you have got a um, you've got exposure to it. Um, yeah. But it's just over ten thousand. And the reason why I think it's uh, kind of um, it, it's got to go further is because it's now acting as a store of value. It's a deflationary currency in the sense that there'll only ever be 21 million Bitcoin yeah. in existence. Mm -hmm. And um, you compare that with any other kind of money that's produced by government, yeah. uh, and you have, no, oh, you have no way of knowing how many dollars there'll ever be, yeah, because yeah, exactly. they'll keep printing more. Yeah, just keep printing they'll more. Keep printing, they'll keep printing more pounds. They'll keep printing more yeah. of, 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 of all sorts of things. They can't print more gold. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's you're kind of comparing to gold. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And it was actually yeah. created and set up with the same dynamic, um, yeah, because okay. um, it, it has this scarcity about it. And every four years, uh, well, without getting too technical, um, Bitcoin. There, there are twelve and a half Bitcoin created every ten minutes, okay. more or less. And that's part of a reward mechanism for Bitcoin miners yep, yep. to protect the network. So that's part of the function of it. Um, 
And that every four years halves. In 2010, there were 50 Bitcoin every 10 minutes. Okay. Um, and uh, in 2016, sorry, 2012, there were 50, but uh, then 25. Now there's 12 and a half. And this May is the halving, which okay. is the um, when they go down to 6.25%. So right. um, one of the um, documents, uh, the other thing I tweeted, which is the Bitcoin clock, um, mm -hmm. which actually effectively shows that uh, out of the all the Bitcoin that exists, mm -hmm. um, uh, most of them are going to be, uh, it's going to get infinitesimal because the final Bitcoins will be mined in to, uh, 2,145. Okay. But by then... You know, if it's halving every four years, it's going to be a frat, going to be tiny. So most of the, the Bitcoin that's going to be available is available now. Um, yeah. And it probably won't be much uh, after, I don't know, um, just thinking probably in about 10, 15 years. So, um, so you know, that that's really why I think it's got that those qualities and properties of gold. Um, and if I said to you, we were probably in around 2000, um, say, the equivalent of 1990, 1994, uh, 93, 94 in the internet boom, it didn't really get going till 2000. And, yeah. you know, if you think of 42 million uh, Bitcoin wallets and mm -hmm. a, popula a global population of 7 billion, um, there's all the other things that are come along, going to come along with that as well. So mm -hmm. um, an interesting thing, you know, a lot of the, the usage of uh, the internet mm. was uh, the parallels are incredible. Did you realize that it was illegal to do transactions on the internet until 1993? No. Bizarre. No, I that up. No. No. So you, all this e-commerce that we, yeah, that we do by now, now yeah. ha only came about because they had to change the law. Yeah. And it was just, and a, it was a foreign and new thing that no one really understood. Exactly. Right, there was, yeah. um, it was a, it was a government research project, um, U.S. government research project, and there was what they called the acceptable use policy, mm -hmm. which um, it, which uh, prohibited commercial activity because right. it was government funded. But once they changed that, that's when everything everything changed. So um, watch out for the way that because technology eventually wins. Um, they just regulators just have to sort of. Um, come to terms with the way the technology works because the technology is brilliant mm. and it is, is is groundbreaking the fact that you know it, i mean these days if criminals use bitcoin for money laundering they're the more stupid criminals because every transaction is traceable yeah because yeah. that's how blockchain works yeah. so i think more you know this is what i the way i answer people when they ask that question because most um you know most criminals uh, use banks <laughs> to launder money and um, yeah. cash, you know they don't. Use, if they're really smart and they're big time, they won't use Bitcoin. Fascinating stuff. So as I've, yeah. a lot of that I've never heard before, Malcolm at all. Uh, you've probably covered a lot of this, but we're going to challenge you now. I think to okay. the, the the sixty second showcase. Mm -hmm. So I was I was trying to think of a a title for your sixty second showcase, and I've come up with the uh, why is Bitcoin not a bubble and why everybody should own it. And you're going to get a choice of two letters. And mm -hmm. the game is you have to try and make a long word with one of those letters, or the, starting with that letter. So the first letter that randomly came up earlier on was a letter D. Would you like to accept it? Oh, yes, that's a good one for me. Thank you. That, <laughs> all right, okay. So are you happy <laughs> with that? Why is yep. Bitcoin not a bubble and why everybody should own it? Or okay. maybe, I should, maybe I should title it Why Kenny Should Go Off His ass and buy some bitcoin i, th I think yeah. that'd be better yeah mark do you okay. want to time this yeah so 60 seconds malcolm um i'll when i say uh, I'll go three two one and uh I'll, I'll when it gets to about 50 seconds i'll just say 10 seconds left and then um just wrap it up so are you ready sure okay, okay. so three two one go okay um so i have to qualify this in terms of actually bitcoin being a bubble it can go into a bubble it can get ahead of itself and it can it can burst and come back down, but ultimately it's not the kind of bubble that uh, you would sort of associate with perhaps tulip mania, where after a, a bit of uh, reflection you realise there's not really much you can do with the tulip other than grow a flower. Um, 
what the is driving Bitcoin is the technology that under underlies it, and also um, the fact that as a currency, um, it actually is not issued by any state, uh, and it has the attributes that you would expect from money, which is a unit of account, a store of value, and a medium of exchange. Ten seconds. Um, and the main reason why I believe it's it's not a bubble because is because of the best is yet to come. But anyway, that's okay. my thoughts. And Kenny, get off your ass and buy some. All right. Okay. Well, about the- that said, I think you should learn a little bit more about yeah. it first. Don't just jump in, but you can download a, a wallet. I'll send you some links. Uh, I think everyone should sort of make a point of finding out more about it. Don't just jump in and and. My caveat as well: this is not investment advice. Sure, sure. Did sure. you did you did you get the word in there? Did did we get the Decent- word? Decentralized. Decentralized. That's, it's decentralized money. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know what? I I remembered I was going to say that straight away. I so said, "No, I'll drop it a little bit into the into the conversation." I completely forgot. So that's the word. <laughs> Right. Yeah, perfect. Right. I'll count. I'll count that up later on, and we'll, we'll see where you are on the leaderboard. Uh, obviously, David Price was top last week with twelve. I'm. I'm not sure right. if de- decentralized is thirteen. I'll, I'll need to check my spelling. I'm well, not a great. A couple, add a couple of Zs. Yeah, yeah. Add a couple of Zs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right, that, that was that was fantastic. I, I, we've probably been talking more than twenty minutes, Mark. Yeah, we've, I think it's, you, it's thirty minutes actually. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a big, it's a big topic, though, isn't it? There's a lot to cover there. I mean, um, we might get you on again in the future, Malcolm, if that's all right, because I think very, there's still lots more to. to talk about. Yeah, very happy to. Okay, that was great. Thanks very much, Malcolm. It's been a, a revelation. Some of the things you've said, so I'll need to. Looking forward to these mm. uh, website links and videos you're going to send me, and I'll I'll get off my arse and I'll, I'll buy some Bitcoin in 2020. I promise. <laughs> very interesting, um, Malcolm. Thanks very much, guys. Really appreciated the opportunity. Yeah. Great thank to you. speak to you. Thank I hope you. To catch up soon. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to another podcast from Market Musings with Fairbairn and Russell. We hope you can join us next time when hopefully we'll have another guest on, Alan Steele, who is an asset manager with over one billion under management. And we'll be talking to him about his profession and also about economics and the global economy and get his feeling for where things are going and how best to increase and manage one's wealth. Thank you and tune in next time. Thank you for listening. Remember to visit our website for more news and other podcasts at www.share-talk.com.